What is good, Washington fans? I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving, a good Turkey Day, a great holiday. I know I did. I know everybody enjoyed that Cowboys loss. They took that L yesterday. Um, so, I mean, hey, you look at the NFCs, man. Um, I'm not going to get into the rankings and talk about the playoffs just yet. But the Cowboys, man, when it hits November, when it starts getting cold outside, that's when things go wrong for the Cowboys. That's when things go wrong. We already know how that is. They start off real hot. They start off 3-0, 6-2, uh, and two or whatever they were, 7-2. and two. And then they start playing better teams, and then that's when they fold. So you already know how that is. But I, I love it. I love everything about that game. They got Cook, Derek Carr, Deshaun Jackson. Did whatever he felt like doing. So, you know, when we play them in two weeks, I don't see anybody on that team that can guard Terry McLaurin, including Trayvon Diggs. We already know what Terry McLaurin does to Trayvon Diggs. So I can't wait till we play the Cowboys. I heard they were crying about the refs. But enough about those guys. Um, let's get to our game. We play the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. Should be a good game. You know, a lot of people are scared about Monday Night Football. But in my opinion, uh, it's time to stop being scared about playing on national TV. It's time to stop being scared of playing on Monday Night Football. Of course, they got to go out there and do it. But this is this is this is gonna be a tough game. But I just think at the moment we're playing better football than the Seattle Seahawks right now. The Seattle Seahawks are on a two-game losing streak. We're on a we're on a two-game winning streak. We're just playing better football than them right now. But let's get into the preview. So we're gonna do the injury report, of course, key matchups, and then um we'll do keys to victory, and then I'll do my um my my uh, score prediction uh for this game. So um, let's get to the injury report here. More storylines. Um, Pete Carroll, he looked very um, – he actually walked off after their press conference. They lost to Cole McCoy in the Cardinals last week. Cole McCoy did whatever he felt like doing. He had a field day on the Seahawks in Seattle. So that kind of tells you what, what we could do to their defense. Um, but, yeah, Pete Carroll, um, Russell Wilson, great player. DK Metcalf, they got some good guys on their team, let Russ Cook and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, they're, they're in turmoil right now. The Seahawks are really, really struggling. They're not playing good football right now at the moment, but let's get into the injury report. So, uh, we have a long list of guys on injury report, I think, but we're starting to get healthier. Logan Thomas practicing. They have not, um, activated him to the roster just yet off of injury reserve, but I think they will, um, before the game on Monday night. Uh, Curtis Samuel has been practicing. He's looked pretty good from what I see. Uh, I do think he's going to play on Monday. This is just my opinion. We'll see what happens. But, you know, they said that he, he possibly could have played against the Panthers. But most likely, it looks like he will be playing on Monday Night Football. So, uh, we got a long list. Uh, Sam Cosme did not practice on um, – he did not practice today. Uh, Tyler Larson did not practice today. Of course, he didn't practice because he, he got hurt pretty bad in the game on Sunday. Sil Ricky Sills Jones did not practice either. Antonio Gibson was limited. He's going to play. Cole Holcomb is going to play. Adam Humphreys, limited. He's going to play. J.D. McKissick, limited. He's going to play. Curtis Samuel, limited. He's going to play. Brandon Sheriff, limited. He's going to play. John Bates was a full participant, and Shaka Tony was a full participant as well. For the Seahawks, they got a very long list of injuries on their team. Um, Dwayne Brown, rest, did not practice. Trey Brown, knee, he's done for the year. He's a really good rookie cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks. He's done for the year with a uh, torn patella tendon. Uh, so that's unfortunate for them. Carlos Dunlap, resting. He did not practice. Gabe Jackson did not practice. Uh, Rashad Penny, hamstring, did not practice. DK Metcalf with a foot injury, did not did not participate in practice, but I, he's going to play on Sunday. Jamal Adams with a groin injury was limited in practice. He's going to play. Uh, linebacker Jordan Brooks, hip, limited. Alice Collins, abdomen, limited. Uh, DJ Reed, knee. Uh, he's going to be their number one corner on Monday night, uh, limited in practice. Brandon Shell, their left tackle, uh, shoulder injury. He was limited. So uh, a lot of their guys are out. A lot of they, a lot of they, they've sustained a couple of Chris Carson done for the year. They've, 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 they've definitely been hit by a couple of injuries here. So, uh, but DK Metcalf, he's on the injury report, but he, he's most likely going to play. So, um, let's get to the tail of the tape here too. Um, so I found some numbers here, stats, rush yards allowed. We're ranked seventh. We're doing really good in stopping the run, and this is this is what happens when it starts getting cold outside. This is why the Cowboys aren't successful when it starts getting cold outside and it really gets tough. The tough gets going in November and December and January. You got to be able to stop the run. You got to be able to run the football. Right now, Washington, we're able to do both of those things. We're stopping the run and we're able to run the football. The Tampa game, we were able to stop the run. In the Carolina, we did let we did let Cam Newton get a couple of runs. We were able to contain Chris McCaffrey. Like he didn't have a crazy day. Chris McCaffrey had a good day, but he didn't have a crazy day. Uh, we're ranked seventh in, in rush yards allowed right now, allowing 98 yards per game. Doing a good job of stopping and containing the run. Seattle, they're ranked 24th, giving up 122 rush yards per game. So we got to run the football. We got to establish the run. That's my first key. Antonio Gibson, 
can't fumble the ball, can't turn over the football. Got to establish run game. Jaden McKissick, he ran the ball really well. Um, Jared Patterson had a couple good runs against Carolina. Antonio Gibson with that last drive against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where we had the ball for 10, 11 minutes. That 10-play drive, that was incredible. We were running the ball and smash mouth. We were playing bully ball on that drive. And I got to give, give a shout-out to the offensive line. Right now, they're first in NFL in the NFL in team run block win rate and fourth in the NFL in the NFL in team pass block win rate right now. So the offensive line is doing a great job. Cornelius Luke, Lucas was the number one rated offensive tackle per pro football focus. So this offensive line, they're playing bully ball right now. Eric Flowers, he's shoving guys, pushing guys out of the way. Um, Sam Cosme came back last week. Cornelius Lucas, Charles Leno has been a doll. He's been a beast. The way he was able to stop Hassan Riddick and um, Brian Burns, guys like that on the Panthers. This offensive line has done a heck of a job. And we had a couple injuries. Chase Ruye being out. Brandon Sheriff being, up, being out a couple games and coming back. This offensive line, Wes Schweitzer playing center, doing a good job. This offensive line, man, has been a huge reason why we have been successful these last two games. We got a, we, I think we have an identity now. We didn't have an identity. Some games, Taylor would have great games and throw, and have, you know, big pass yard games. And then some games, we, we, we would not look good at all. And I think we have an identity. Run the football. Stop playing from behind. Play bully ball. Win the time of possession battle. Run the football. Help Taylor Heineke out. Let him make plays and improvise. And use his escapability, escapability and mobility and let Taylor do his thing, man. Let him be the legend of Taylor Heineke. And that's how we win football games. The secondary is playing a lot better. Uh, pass yards allowed. Seattle's ranked 30th. They give up a lot of yards uh, through the air. Uh, like I said, Trey Brown being out is really going to hurt them. Third down offense. We've improved in that area. We're ranked 17th, uh, converting on 39% of our third downs. We were terrible third down offensively. We were terrible in the red zone. And we've done a great job of that. We've been a lot better on fourth downs as well, converting our fourth downs. That last play, four, fourth and three against the Panthers, Taylor Heineke was moving around, dancing in the pocket. I mean, that beautiful pass to John Bates. That was incredible on a fourth down play. Seattle, the ranked 31st offensively on third downs. They have been abysmal on third downs. Ever since Russell Wilson has come back, this whole season, Russell Wilson has struggled third downs off, on third downs offensively. He's 13 for 37 converting on 35% of third downs. Geno Smith was actually better than Russell Wilson on third downs, 15 to 22 for 139 yards. Now, Russell Wilson, he really has struggled. He's not, he has not looked like himself. Now, he did have the finger injury that could be impacting him, but Russell Wilson has not looked like the old Russell Wilson, the old let Russ cook guy. He has not looked like that at all. He has not. Uh, rush yards per game, we're ranked 10th right now. We're running the ball really well, 122 yards per game. Seattle's ranked 23rd and running the ball, so we got to stop the run. We got to stop the run early, make them throw the ball. We got to we got to force Russ to throw the ball, keep him in the pocket. Yards allowed per game. Seattle's ranked 31st defensively, so their defense has, has been underwhelming uh, so far this year. So, um, and they're, Seattle's also the worst in the NFL at defending running back screens. So we got to do a lot of swing routes. I, I would do. I would definitely get Antonio Gibson involved in the passing game. This would be perfect. For J.D. McKissick, the former Seahawk, to get a couple screens, have back screens, you know, that will route that worked really well against the Giants. I would love to see that against this defense. I would love to see that against this defense. So key matchups here, DJ Ma DK Metcalf versus William Jackson, uh, Tyler Lockett versus Kendall Fuller. We got to be physical with those guys. We got to be physical. DK Metcalf, you know, he gets in fights and stuff when they lose. He gets mad and upset. He got ejected from the Packers game. They got to be ready to fight. William Jackson, man, he's a physical corner. Let him be him. He's playing a lot. He's playing a little bit better than what he did. He couldn't get much worse, but I am intrigued to see this matchup against DK Metcalf, also against Tyler Lockett. On the other side, our guys, Terry McLaurin versus DJ Reed in their corners. I don't see a cornerback on the Seahawks that can check Terry McLaurin, to be honest with you. I really don't. I don't see it at all. Um, John Allen versus their center and their interior offensive line. I think John Allen's going to win that matchup all day. So that's going to be huge. That's a huge key to victory for me, too, is getting interior pressure on Russell Wilson. John Allen's going to have to have a big game. Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle. All of our DTs are going to have to step up and have a big game. And I think John Allen, he's playing his butt off. He definitely deserves to be a pro bowler this season. Sometimes he's playing at an all-pro level the last couple of weeks. He has dominated his matchup every time. We're going to need John Allen to step up and do that every day. Every game, especially this game on Monday Night Football. Um, my other key is um, Taylor Heineke, be himself. Create with your legs. Be the legend of Taylor Heineke, man. Do what you do best. You know, he's been he's doing a great job staying under control, being himself. He's not a game manager like Ron Rivera said earlier. Now Ron Rivera has changed his tune and said, hey, we just got to let Taylor be himself. We got to let him improvise. You know, he's at best when he's off script. Make something shake, you know. 
that fourth and three, I bring it up every time, um, where he was running around in the pocket, staying in the pocket. Let him run. Taylor, run. If you see a wide open lane when that guy hits you and you got that penalty and the guy got that penalty, he stood up. It was like, you don't want that smoke? That's the Taylor Heineke I want to see on Monday Night Football. If we get that Taylor Heineke who's not thinking too much and just plays his game and plays, you know, NFL street type football, then we can win this game. We will win this game if Taylor Heineke plays within himself and plays Taylor Heineke football. We will win this game for sure. Um, limit big plays. We cannot let DK Metcalf get plays, get big, big, uh, big plays. We cannot let Tyler Lockett get big plays. We got to stop the run. Uh, they got a good running back in DJ Dallas and other guys like that. We got to stop the run and limit big plays. We cannot let them get behind us. Bobby McCain is playing better. Landon Collins is playing better in the box. Cameron Curl is playing his butt off right now. He had a great game against Christian McCaffrey in that fourth down stop. We're not letting guys run passes like Darius Slayton did and Cordero Patterson knock on wood. That hasn't happened in a long time. I haven't seen it happen. I have not seen it happen. The secondary, they're communicating better. They're playing better. They're playing good football. They're playing. Danny Johnson has been instrumental in that, too. He had a really nice pass breakup against the Panthers. And he's playing good football. He's playing physical football. William, like I said, William Jackson's playing better. Ben St. Juice, let's see if we, can, if we can get him in the mix. The linebackers are playing better. Cole Holcomb is playing solid football. Jamin Davis is still developing. Um, so, so guys are playing better. The defense is playing. The secondary is playing better. They have been keys. They've been a huge key for our two-game win streak. Time of possession battle. We got to win that. We got to win the turnover battle. No fumbles from Antonio Gibson. No fumbles from DeAndre Carter. He fumbled on that kickoff return. That almost killed us. Shout out to Troy Apke for picking up the fumble. Um, and we got to get, we got to convert in the red zone. Red zone has been a problem for us, but the last two games, red zone, we've been, we've been, we've been doing a good job. Shout out to Joey Sly for making his extra points. He's got to keep continuing doing that. He's got to keep making his field goals. If it's a 46 yard field goal, um, or even if it's a 50, Ron Rivera, I did not agree with that 56-yard field goal attempt uh, where we, it, it was going to be a 56-yarder. Ron decided to punt the ball, and the Carolina, they ended up scoring on it. So I did not agree with that decision, but Ron Rivera on a third downs and fourth downs, he's got to he, – he's done better in the past two games. I'll say that. I, I really did not like his third down and fourth down decisions. The riverboat – you know, he was actually riverboat Ron in the Tampa game where he scored the touchdown with Antonio Gibson. I, I thought that was a great decision. But his situational awareness, I say this every preview video and every video I make, Situa situational awareness and feel of the game for Ron Rivera. If it's fourth and three, you know, and we're on their 45-yard line, should we go for it? You got to understand the momentum of the game. So I'm looking at that. That's a huge key for me is Ron Rivera, his decision. making. Of course, Scott Turner's play calling. Scott Turner has committed to the run game, whether we're losing, whether we're winning committing to the run game, and Scott Turner has done a better job of that, letting Taylor be him, let him run around, make some plays with his legs, let him do, let him be himself. Uh, like I already said, interior pressure, third down defense, third down offense, we got to convert on third downs. We're doing a lot better on third downs defensively. We did a good, good job against Tom Brady. We did a good job against Cam Newton, only two for nine on third downs. So we've done a lot better on that too. So, um, But, yeah, th those are my keys, man. Turnover battle. Running the football, third down defense, third down offense. Let Taylor be him. Let him let him be let him be himself, man. Let him do his thing. Let him be himself. Maybe if he's got to run, let him run. Taylor's got to recognize that too. If you got that running lane, just go ahead and run. Fourth and three. If you got to dance around the pocket, make something happen. Go ahead and do that too, man. But he, sometimes he does hold on the to the ball a little too long and get sacked. That's my only problem with Taylor. But I love the way he's playing right now. He's playing good football. Do we know if he? Do we know if he's the franchise guy? We don't know that yet. Let's just enjoy the road. Let's just enjoy the ride. Take it game by game and see what happens, man. Maybe he could be the bridge quarterback next year and you draft a quarterback. But let's just enjoy the ride. He's playing good football right now. He's playing good football. He had a, he had a very high quarterback rating. He's making good plays. He's doing the right thing. He's making smart plays. He's hanging in tough in the pocket. Him, That chemistry with him and Terry McLaurin, feed Terry McLaurin. The chemistry they have going right now is really good. Keep it up. We're going to get guys back. Curtis Samuel coming back. DeAndre Carter is going to be a big key to this game, too. Kick returning, punt returning. Him getting open on those, on those fourth downs, too. Adam Humphreys has been playing better. Cam Sims in the red zone, too, is going to be huge. Cam Sims is going to be huge. That was, a, that was a hell of a laser pass that Taylor threw. If you look at the picture, it went through two Panthers defenders to get to Cam Sims. That's how you know Taylor Honey. He's in the zone right now. His confidence is through the roof right now. I just want to see him put together some consistent games because he'll have a great game against the Giants, and then he'll have, he'll have a stinker against the Bills. He'll have a great game against the Falcons, and then he'll stink it up against the Saints or something like that. So I want to see him consistently put good games together. That's what we need from Taylor Heineke, just consistency. That's what we need to see from him. But Cam Sims, that he played well. I, I like the way he played. I like the way Adam Humphreys played. DeAndre Carter, I thought he's been huge for us. 
He should make the Pro Bowl for kick return, and he's been a hell of a wide receiver. He's been – he's probably was the best free agent pickup this whole offseason for us, to be honest. He really has been um, out of all the guys that we signed. We signed Curtis Samuel, we signed William Jackson. They, they have not really lived up to the hype. But DeAndre Carter has definitely impressed me a lot. I did not expect him to play – as well as he has. Dustin, I mean, I almost said bum Dustin Hopkins, but Joey Sly, he's got to step up for us. He's been playing really well. Tressway and all that, you know, punting for us, getting good field position. But let's let's get to uh, my actual stat, my actual prediction here. So you guys already know, man, I am a little superstitious, but I really don't want to do this this year. And I had us beating the Seahawks um, when the schedule came out. I picked us to beat the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. I just had a good feeling about this one. I got us winning. 24 to 20. We do really well. We we usually when we when we keep teams um under 23, but I got us winning. I got us winning this game. I'm going to say 28-20, man. I'm going to say 28-20. I think I think we win this one somewhat convincingly. I think we win this one somewhat convincingly. And it's going to be so I'm trying to think how to score, how the game plays out. 28 to 20. Uh we're we're going to score four touchdowns. It's gonna be twenty-eight to. It's gonna be twenty-eight to uh, thirteen at one point. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna be winning big at one point. I got a good feeling. Seattle, they're just not playing. The Seahawks are not playing good football. They're just not. We're playing really good football. We have an identity. We're running the football. We're playing Smash Mouth football. We're playing bully ball. Scott Turner's actually playing Smash Mouth football. We're calling Smash Mouth plays. And this offensive line has been incredible. That's why. I, that's why my confidence is going up with the football team. Is the offensive line and Taylor Heineke is playing. The football that 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 he that he plays, he's playing within himself. Um, so I got us winning twenty eight twenty. I think we're gonna be up twenty eight thirteen. I think I think we're gonna be up by two scores at one point. They're gonna score a late touchdown, twenty eight to uh, twenty, and they're gonna do an onside kick, and we just get it. And we kneel. I think it's gonna be a great game. I think it's gonna be lit at FedEx Field, Landover, Maryland. I think the crowd's gonna get into it. They're gonna get loud on third downs. We're gonna get probably a one or two interceptions. I think this defense is gonna do their thing. I think they're gonna be aggressive. I think the secondary is gonna be really good against Russell Wilson. I really do. I'm very confident about this game, but. I really, I pray I don't jinx it. All right, you guys. Hello, the football team. Let me know what you guys think, man. Peace.